Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Hey guys, Dave Narona, and we're about to start the 2023-24 season. And as you can see, I've got the 2024 Summit X850 Turbo R. And uh, this is in a 165. I also am going to be running 154 this year. Um, so this, uh, I'm, I wanted to do a video on everything that I add to my sled. Um, now people think, you know, when you ride for ski doo, you're just going to order everything and that's not really the way it works. Um, I have a budget and I usually try to, to be lower end on my budget, um, but have everything that I need. And there are some things that you may or may not need. Um, and that's why we're going to go through all of them. But I, through the years of riding, all these things that I have are just the experience that I've come to see that actually make a big difference and things that you can add now that'll save you later on. So the first question is a lot of people ask, why are you riding a Summit X and not a Summit uh, X with Expert package? Well, after riding all the sl sleds and spending lots of time on the free ride, the Expert, as well as the Summit X last year and a free ride last year, um, the Summit X is just easier to ride. So where I ride in uh, Squamish to Whistler to Pemberton, we get lots of deep snow. I like riding super deep snow. If it's not that deep, I'd rather ski or pal surf. And uh, I like riding technical terrain too, uh, trees and, and, and stuff like that. And I've never been held back by my sled, let's put it that way. But at the end of the day or day after day after day, this sled is the easiest to ride and gets me through all that terrain in the easiest way possible. So having said that, we're going to get into what I add to my sled right out of the, of the, of the dealer showroom. So the first thing that I add is the skid plate. Now, a skid plate is really important because it protects the belly of your, of your sled and also protects the back uh, cooler. And uh, it's one of those things where you can get away with not running it, but if you hit something, especially just a st small stump at the beginning of the season, you're gonna get some damage and then you're gonna eventually buy the skid plate and have to fix the damage. So it's, it's something that's pretty simple. It's not very expensive, but I add it to every machine. And while we're down here, one of the things that I add is the Salsa King um, ski rubbers. Now these are from Brett Rasmussen, Ride Rasmussen style. And what they do is if you notice, uh, you can run your skis centered uh, which I have them actually in the 34 inch position. You can set them centered at 35 or on the outside at 36. When you do that, the ski rubber that comes stock is just n as narrow as the spindle. So when you offset it, only half of it is actually on the, um, the stock uh, rubber. As you can see, the Salsa King goes right across the way here. So no matter what you run, you've got this. It's also way stiffer. This is the third season on these and they literally don't, um, they don't pound out. So they just work better. They help you side hill better and they give you better contact overall. And uh, so you can contact Brett, Brett Razmataz Rasmussen uh, and pick up a set of those. They come from Russia, so that's even radder. And, um, and so then uh, when we move up here, we're gonna move up to the front of the sled. And this is the glove box here. So one of the things I add to my glove box is this USB port. Now you can add two electronic devices, the USB. I also will get into the other thing I add, but the plug-in is right under your gauge. So you have to remove your air uh, intakes, the gauge, which is, a, these are six bolts to take both those off and four bolts take your screen off. And on the right side is where you plug in uh, the auxiliary plug for the USB. And also, uh, I'll talk about my handguards in a little bit and what I do there. And um, for those of you, it just allows me to have, uh, this is the plug-in for my phone because I have the large gauge. Um, and this allows me to have either charge, uh, say my flashlight, my Mountain Lab flashlight runs out or my GoPro runs out. I can plug it in right there and charge it throughout the day. So I never go without battery power. And in case you're wondering when you open your sled, if you did uh, get the big gauge, it comes with this heated bag. This, this piece here is just if you have a small phone, if you're running an iPhone 3 like Tony Jenkins, yeah, then you can put it in here and then uh, wrap it around and you wrap it 10 times and then it'll fit in the bag perfectly. Time to upgrade your phone, Tony. Um, and uh, so then uh, the first obvious thing when we look at the front of the sled here is the hand guards. Um, these don't come on a Summit X, they come on the Expert, but I add them because once you've run them, you can't run without them. And I add a little bit of pizzazz here. Um, my our, lid up here and uh it's just something uh, i've had these forever and, and uh, i really like it and um 
And so that is the second thing that I plug in along with my U USB, getting a little bit of a flash here. And then um, once you run these, like I said, you won't go without. And also, if you if you live in a cold environment, getting to the to the pow in the morning, these really do uh, you know protect your hands and uh, from the from the wind, especially because we're running sort of thinner gloves for better uh, technical advantage in the backcountry. And then um, also again, the Summit X does not come with a reservoir protector. So I add the ski -Doo reservoir protector and I'll put all the pin, uh, the, the part numbers uh, for these in, in the description below. Um, and of course it does come with the new adjustable brake lever, which I love. And then one thing that I've been adding now for three seasons, um, actually four seasons, I've been using these Deep Snow Pro grips. And you can see overstock, these are just super grippy. Um, they actually don't wear out that that quickly, even though they're super grippy, but man, what a difference over the stock. So that's something that I add on to. And for, different for everybody is their size of riser. So this comes with a 4.7 riser. I drop it down to the 3.7 riser. And it's just with my boots on, that puts me right in that perfect spot so that I'm using the big muscles of my back, not my little puny arms uh, when I'm carving. And as well as I obviously have one uh, key here, but I also get a spare made. Now I keep this with me uh, in my pack at all times. So in case I ever lose this key, I can get out of the back country with this. You cannot, if you don't have a key or you lose it, uh, you either need to fly your machine out or fly a computer in to reprogram your key. So really important to, to grab a second key. And then when we move over to the right side, you'll see uh, one of the simplest mods I have, and I actually bring these in into Canada. So if you're in Canada and you're looking for a race rubber, this is a race rubber, goes around your kill switch, and it allows it, it's always in the up position to shut it off. You push it down, and it's always in the up position. So one reason why I love this is a lot of guys move their kill switches, but if you move around machines and some guy gets into an emergency, of course, you can always pull your key, but if you can't, and you don't know where the shutoff is, that can actually be a really bad thing. So I like running it in the stock position and it never gets shut off from trees or branches, but I just hold it down to shut it off. So the other thing I'll say on this is that this year there's, um, when, if you want to get one of these, um, there's two different kind of kill switches, the one from 2023 and the one from previous. They both work the same. It doesn't matter which one you have but it does matter if you're gonna get a race rubber. So the Summit X on mine came with the older style, um, which I actually like better. And so I had to use the older race rubber on there. And what I'm really interested in actually trying is Tom at TKI, he's a good friend of mine. And he's come out with this throttle block here, which is aluminum. So as you can see, there's a lot less material in there. A lot less snow gets trapped in there. You know, when it's super deep, it can get snow and ice in here in your throttle. And so this is designed to prevent it. So that's one of the things I added to my sled this year. Super easy install to, to do. Just did it uh, last night. And uh, so that's sort of at the, the front of the sled, pretty easy. And then moving back here, again, one of the things that's really simple that I added and I've been running for four seasons is the sled tread uh, pads. Now they make them for the G4, uh, all, all sleds, um, all manufacturers. And you know, it's one of those things where people go, oh, what's that gonna do? Well, they do two things. Number one, they protect your, your um, knee into the door as a pad. It's 14.5 mils thick and it's like a waterproof near, um, uh, neoprene with a 3M backing. So it's super durable and long lasting. But one thing that it, no one talked about, I wear knee braces and actually where you sit in your natural position on your sled, you actually lean right into these pads. So it provides another contact point and it gives you grip. And also when you're sled skiing and you're doubling up, you actually can lean into it and it's warm because foam doesn't get cold. It, it actually takes the heat and just radiates it. So it's a really, really awesome. Um, and you can use lots of different colors and stuff like that. They do a great job at, at sled tread. And finally, also, um, the, uh, one, the seat I, that comes on the X is great, uh, but I do like the lower expert seat, so I put a, the low seat on there. And uh, here's where I keep my spare belt, and this is where the battery is uh, if you have the big screen. If you don't have this, then you have the small belt um, guard back here. Now, I know it looks like I'm going on an expedition, um, but this is if I went into the backcountry for a few days into a hut or when I go into Grizzly Lodge or when I go sled skiing or pal surf and, and stay overnight, <clears throat> this is what the back end of my sled looks like. So the, one of the reasons why I love the ski and snowboard rack from Skidoo is that you can run the racks and a fuel caddy 
and an extra 40 liter bag and your regular tunnel bag all together. And I have one rack <clears throat> on either side. This is, of course has got my skis. My pow surf is on the other side. So normally in a day, like if you, if you, you know, one of the biggest things with sled skiing I get a lot is how do you wear your boots? I use touring boots. So they have a vibram sole and they stick to the, to the running boards. So no big deal there. If you don't, a lot of guys want to carry their boots into the backcountry, and you can use this 40 liter adventure bag is awesome. It's waterproof. And then when you're done, you just put it to the side. I also use it when I go into Grizzly Lodge. All my clothes and everything I need for the lodge just sits in here. And so then it, um, I just put that aside in the lodge and then I go riding for the day. I've got my fuel, which I'll also usually drop. And then I've got the new uh, Pro Light bag here. If you think it doesn't have a shovel on it, I got my shovel right in here. So super cool and it's out of the elements and, uh, and that's where I keep all my gear. So the reality is, is most of the time, if I go sledding, all I have is this bag. If I'm going out for a full day and it's super deep or I'm going on an expedition, of course I carry fuel. And, uh, and then you can see the ski and snowboard racks are easy to take off or put on, store in your adventure bag or one of your tunnel bags. And again, you can put your pal surf and put it, if you just want to pal surf, of course, you're already wearing all your sledding gear. You can throw this in the trees, sled around all day, and then hit some pal uh, laps after that. So it just makes it really, really easy. And last but not least, that you do need to run when you're running the ski and snowboard rack is the heavy duty hitch bumper. And uh, you can also just run this bumper because it's not very expensive. It really stiffens the whole back end of the sled up as well and, uh, and just works awesome. And it's got the kick up. Also, if you want to tow, it's got the uh, holes here so that you can add the tow uh, hitch to it so you can tow a sled in if you're doing one of those expeditions. And um, that's about it. The other thing that I don't have that I'm showing that's in the garage right now, and the last thing we'll talk about is the accessory snow flap. Now, we all know if you've been riding the short tunnel and you've been riding one of these Turbo R's or previous year model turbos or naturally aspirated, you know how well the machine cools. It literally cools better than any other machine on the market, even without a snow flap. But there's going to be 15% of your riding where you're going to need a snow flap. For me, it's when it hasn't snowed and they've groomed and it's really hard icy because I leave early in the morning. I throw the snow flap on and when I get up to the top, I leave it with my fuel or I can strap it to my bag. Um, but it's really only 15%. Sometimes during the winter when that happens and then also in the spring. And uh, so it's a really good important to have that accessory snow, snow flap as well. So I've kept things minimal, still actually quite a lot of stuff. Um, but over the years, these are things that I've just kept and found that they just work the best and will absolutely make your experience in the backcountry a lot better. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the uh, in, in down below. And thanks for watching all these videos. The reason why I like doing them is to just basically help save you money. It's hard to say that when we're talking about a sport like sledding, but if you buy the right gear once, you end up saving money from buying stuff over and over till you get the right thing. So hopefully this video helps you out. And like I said, if you have any questions at any time, hit me on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. The book, uh, if I don't have the answer for it, I'll find it from one of the engineers or from one of, somebody else who's doing more of that style of riding. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the PAL. It's not going to be long.